Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about some of the research that I've been conducting regarding software-defined networking. In particular, I wanted to talk about software-defined traffic measurement with OpenSketch. This presentation assumes some knowledge regarding what software-defined networking is, as well as OpenFlow protocol. Um, it also assumes some knowledge regarding uh, computer hardware, in particular, what are TCAMs and what are SRAMs. So I wanted to start out by giving a broad overview of what OpenSketch is. OpenSketch provides a simple three-stage switch pipeline consisting of a hashing stage, a classification stage, and a counting stage. It's designed to work on commodity switch components. It's designed to provide diverse measurement tasks. It's been tested with real ISP traffic data, in particular on a net FPGA prototype. They've been working with CADA packet traces for this purpose. It's been designed to be efficient and easily programmable. And it has a good memory to accuracy trade-off. So OpenSketch identifies two important stages for network management. The first stage is measuring the network traffic in real time. The second stage is adjusting the control of the network in response to those measurements. So with regard to the first stage, we want to be able to measure traffic anomalies in real time. We also want to be able to measure traffic aggregates. With regard to the second stage, we want to be able to respond in terms of the routing of the traffic. We also want to be able to respond in terms of rate limiting. So for the control aspect of the network, control APIs exist, in particular open flow. But what about measurement APIs? Now, when we're dealing with flow-based measurements, what are some of the challenges involved? Well, for flow-based measurements, existing tools consume a lot of resources, in particular, CPU, memory, and bandwidth. For example, NetFlow does packet sampling. Now, if the sampling rate is set too high, it can result in the use of too many counters. If the sampling rate is set too low, then a lot of the flows might be missed in the process. So the solution offered up by OpenSketch is to provide a customized dynamic measurement collection scheme, and in particular one that guarantees a certain amount of accuracy. Now when we're dealing with sketch-based measurements, what are some of the challenges involved there? Well, for sketch-based measurements, the existing tools lack a certain amount of generality, in particular, they may require a customized chip on the switch or some sort of network processor. And they may be difficult to update as well. Solution offered up by OpenSketch is provide a simple, efficient data plane. And in particular, let's try to work with the existing commodity switch hardware that's out there rather than trying to use custom chips. We also want to provide customized analysis, though. So OpenSketch is comprised of two major components. The first major component being um, providing generic efficient measurement APIs. Those APIs provide a choice of flow, and we can select our flow based on hashing and wildcard rules. We also have a choice of data, for example, byte count, packet count, or average flow size. We also have a choice of storage, um, and OpenSketch uses compact data storage structures so that it's able to compress the amount of data that's required. And it, in terms of efficiency, it's designed to operate at high link speed, even with a limited amount of memory. The second major component is providing simple measurement programming. In particular, with the measurement library that's provided, it automatically configures the data plane pipeline. It allocates switch memory across multiple measurement tasks. It doesn't require additional switch overhead, and it tries to maximize accuracy. So why are we using sketches? Well, the first key sketch property is low memory usage. The output size of a sketch is significantly smaller than the input. And in particular, it works with these compact data structures, for example, bitmaps. Bitmaps might be used to count the number of unique source IP addresses, for example. 
Another example of a compact data structure is account min sketch. Second reason to use sketches is they have a provable memory to accuracy trade-off. In particular with bitmaps, it's been shown that this relationship holds such that the standard deviation and the number of errors in the bitmap is inversely proportional to the number of bits in the bitmap. So if we increase the number of bits in the bitmap, that error decreases. Same with the Kalman sketch. The error in a Kalman sketch is inversely proportional to the amount of memory that we allocate to the Kalman sketch. So if we increase the amount, total amount of memory that we allocate to the Kalman sketch, the error should decrease in the process. So what are some of the examples of sketches in terms of what OpenSketch provides? Well, OpenSketch provides heavy hitter detection, traffic change detection, flow size distribution estimation, global iceberg detection, as well as fine grain delay measurement. For OpenSketch, it performs two functions in the data plane. The first one being picking which packets to measure. And we do that partly through the use of hashing. Hashing allows us to summarize the flows that we want to measure. For example, we can count the number of duplicate packets by hashing on the packet body. We can also pick the packets measured based upon classification. Classifying allows us to separate different flow types and then determine based upon the flow type what counters are required as well as the accuracy that's required. For example, we can focus on a specific IP address to try to identify a potential anomaly within a network. The second function of the data plane is to store and export the data. OpenSketch uses a small table which supports complex indexing. This in turn requires minimal bandwidth overhead to export the data to the controller. With OpenSketch, we only store counters and those counters can represent a number of different things. For example, they could represent a microflow or a wildcard flow, for instance. OpenSketch again has this three-stage data plane. The first one being the hashing stage, second one being the classification stage, and the third one being the counting stage. For the first stage, the hashing stage reduces the amount of measurement data. We're trying to pre-screen the data that comes in. It's also calculating the hash functions. The classification stage is selecting the particular flows of interest. It's filtering packets based upon matching rules. Those rules are then mapped to particular counters and the counting stage. And the counting stage is where we start accumulating flow statistics. Now in terms of the switch data plan for OpenSketch, Again, it's comprised of three different stages. We have the hashing stage in the far left, classification stage in the middle, and then the counting stage in the far right. The hash input function, we can then pick fields of the packet of particular interest. Then we have the hash input function, which feeds into the hash functions themselves. Then within the classification input function, we compute our classification field. A classification table holds the wildcard rules. Our classification table also has a set of indexes, which are used to compute the counter addresses. Then those counter addresses index into the particular entries in the counting table. And the controller can then periodically query the counting table based upon the ID. And the counting table will then report back its statistics. Again, OpenSketch is designed to work with commodity switch components. It uses a few simple hash functions. Those hash functions can be shared among sketches to reduce the amount of memory required. It uses a few TCAM entries for classification purposes. It can match packets based on multiple rules, and that can be done in parallel in the interest of efficiency. We also have flexible counter storage in SRAM and OpenSketch ensures that sketches fit into the SRAM independent of the traffic conditions. OpenSketch has support for diverse sketches. In particular, 
one of interest is picking packets with different granularity. And one of the issues here is that there is a trade-off between flow space coverage and accuracy. So that if we pick a smaller flow space coverage, we can use more counters, we get greater accuracy, but the results are less global. That is, they're less representative of the population. If we go with a larger flow space, the results are more representative, but they're also less accurate. So the solution offered by OpenSketch is using a multi-resolution classifier. And this happens to be easily implemented with TCAM. Now, how do we actually go about programming different measurement tasks with OpenSketch? Well, OpenSketch offers a variety of measurement tasks through different building block combinations. For example, OpenSketch provides a super spreader algorithm. It first uses the count min sketch, which gives the number of packets for each source. It uses a bitmap sketch, which gives a single count of the unique destinations for each packet. It then combines the comment sketch and the bitmap sketch, which gives us the number of unique destinations each source sends to. It then uses a reversible sketch to try to identify the potential sources of those packets. Now, in terms of the actual measurement task implementation for OpenSketch, one thing I wanted to emphasize again is the fact that we can create different measurement tasks based upon different combinations of building blocks. For example, if we take the count min sketch, combine it with the reversible sketch, we get the heavy hitter measurement task. And referring back to the previous example, if we take the count min sketch, combine it with the bitmaps, as well as a reversible sketch, we get the super spreader algorithm. <clears throat> now for OpenSketch, the controller has a few key components, two being the sketch manager and the resource allocator. Now the sketch manager automatically configures sketches to determine the best memory to accuracy trade-off. The resource allocator divides the switch memory resources across different measurement tasks. In particular with the sketch manager, the correct configuration depends on a number of factors, in particular, what are the switch resources that are available? What are the accuracy requirements? What are the measurement tasks we're trying to implement? And what is the current traffic distribution? The sketch manager will choose the correct sketch for the given task. It'll allocate resources across different sketches. For example, it'll determine the number of hash functions required, the number of counters, or the number of bitmap bits. It'll also factor in the memory constraints, and it tries to minimize the error rate. It'll even install new sketches to learn about uh, the current traffic statistics, because again, the accuracy depends on the current traffic characteristics. And in terms of the resource allocator, it allocates resources across multiple tasks. It then tries to optimize the accuracy given limited amount of resources available. For example, what are the TCAM and the SRAM sizes that we have to work with? And for each task, the operator specifies the importance, the accuracy of that task of certain value called beta. If beta is set to one, we're saying that this task is most important in terms of the accuracy. If beta is set to zero, we're saying this task is the least important in terms of accuracy, and beta can range anywhere from zero to one. In terms of the architecture of OpenSketch, it's divided into this controller plane and the data plane. The data plane we talked about earlier, again, consisting of the hashing stage, the classification stage, and the counting stage. The controller plane consists of in this measurement program, and a measurement library. The measurement program contains the algorithms for the heavy header detection, the super spreader detection, as well as the flow size distribution, among others. Uh, the measurement library is where we find the resource allocator, the sketch manager, um, and the, all the different sketches, such as the count min sketch, the reversible sketch, and the bloom filter. Uh, I also wanted to point out again the interaction between the controller and the data plane for the accounting table because that's where we query the counting table, and that's what it's reporting back its statistics. In terms of the switch prototype implementation for OpenSketch, they went with a NetFPGA prototype. This claimed to have no effect on the switch forwarding latency, as well as the throughput of the switch. 
the header parser will pull out the relevant fields, and then those fields will be hashed by hash functions which occur in parallel uh, in the interest of efficiency. Uh, the wildcard lookup table matches that header and then hashes the values again in parallel in the interest of efficiency. Each match rule will then update an SRM counter. For the prototype implementation in terms of the controller, there are seven sketches currently available. For example, there is the bitmap, the Kalman sketch, as well as the multi-resolution classifier. There are two functions available for each sketch. We can configure a sketch, for example, what are the packet fields we want to use, what are the memory constraints, so forth. We also have the query function, which allows us to collect the statistics. In terms of the measurement program, it periodically queries for statistics, and then it'll install new sketches to learn more about the current traffic characteristics, and it'll change the required accuracy as needed. So in conclusion for OpenSketch, it has a good memory to accuracy trade-off. It's been shown to have zero pulse positives with less memory. It's been shown to have a smaller error rate with less memory. It's been shown to have comparable accuracy to certain streaming algorithms. Although one thing is it doesn't support complex actions and it may require operator input to improve accuracy. For instance, the operator may need to input some esoteric data such as what is the knowledge of the current traffic skew? OpenSketch provides a large task variety given limited resources. In particular, we can create these different tasks based upon different building block combinations. In terms of the prototype, it's been shown to have not impede the switch throughput. In terms of performance, it supports multiple hash functions and wildcard rules. Again, we're doing things in parallel, in terms of efficiency. It is limited by the SRM counter updates, though. Uh, but it has been shown to be better if we have a large number of I.O. ports with your SRAM. OpenSketch is offered up as an alternative software-defined measurement and management solution to OpenFlow, in particular because there is a smaller communication overhead between the control and switches because we're dealing with these compact data structures. Now, in terms of other products that were researched, um, I also looked at Dream. It stands for Dynamic Resource Allocation for Software-Defined Measurement. Dream dynamically adjusts resources devoted to particular measurement tasks. It guarantees user-specified level of accuracy. It uses this interesting divide and merge algorithm that allows you to pinpoint in different flow features of interest. It is focused on heavy hitter and traffic change detection, and it may reject tasks depending on the particular constraints. Also looked at uh, DCM, it stands for Distributive and Collabor Collaborative Traffic Measurement in Software-Defined Networks. It's shown to be accurate, uh, memory efficient in terms of flow measurement, provides network-wide flow coverage. It addresses the need to minimize the use of switch resources. It accounts for duplicates and false positives in measurements, though network resources may still be wasted in this case. Also looked at ADN, which stands for Auto Defending Network. It's particularly interesting because they're looking at network behavior analysis. In particular, they're looking at behavior pattern recognition. They're also going through and defining what is a flow, what is a session, what is network behavior. They're also concerned with low balancing among the switches. They're concerned with determining the source of attacks, and they're also trying to attempt to mobilize attackers. One of the drawbacks, though, is it's theoretical at this point, doesn't really seem to be tested in live networks or even simulated networks. And it's rather vague in how to properly deploy flows to the switches. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, please feel free to Feel free to leave them below. Um, otherwise, thank you for listening to this lecture.